John Magda. With the induction of John J. Magda into the Hall of Distinguished Alumni, we add one more honor to an already lengthy list. He was a true American hero. First for the Hilltopper football team and baseball teams in the late 1930s, and much more importantly, later for the United States as a fighter pilot during both World War II and the Korean War. During the Battle of Midway, after a successful mission to attack three Japanese aircraft carriers, Magnus' plane ran out of fuel over the Pacific Ocean. He miraculously survived. He and another young Navy pilot lashed their rubber boats together and spent five days and four nights of sun, wind, thirst, hunger, and despair floating in shark-infested waters. Rescuers found them 300 miles from where their planes had been shot down. Later, the pilots told of planes flying overhead without seeing them, of their ceaseless battle with the sharks, and of remaining soaked from heavy ocean swells throughout the ordeal. The food supply for the period consisted of a bar of chocolate, a three-ounce can of concentrated food, a small bottle of malted milk tablets, and some water. John Magna was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal, and two gold stars for heroism, an extraordinary achievement as a pilot and leader of a fighter plane division. At age 23, he was indeed America's flying ace, but his stellar career in service to his country was far from over. In 1948, he served as a member of the first jet squadron to operate on board an aircraft carrier. That year, he set a speed record in a Navy jet fighter by making the over 100,000, excuse me, the over 1,000 mile flight from Seattle to San Diego in two hours, 12 minutes and 54 seconds. In 1949, he was assigned to the Blue Angels, the Navy's flight exhibition team, eventually becoming the Blue Angels, Angels commander. His team was later assigned to duty in the Korean War. John Magna, was killed when his jet was hit during attack on the North Korean and Chinese installations. He was awarded the Navy Cross for heroism. His other military awards include the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal with two gold stars, the Purple Heart, the American Defense Service Medal, the American Campaign Medal, the Asian Pacific Campaign Medal, the World War II Victory Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, and the Korean Service Medal and the United Nations Service Medal. <clears throat> Success is about overcoming fear and taking risks and meeting challenges and fears and risks and challenges that compare with few that most human beings have ever have the opportunity to face. John J. Magna, his repeated perseverance in the face of overwhelming obstacles is something I hope current and future students of Western Kentucky University will long remember and from which find inspiration. It is an honor to induct John Magna into the Hall of Distinguished Alumni for Western Kentucky University. He was a giant among men. To those who knew and loved him, John Magda was larger than life. In his short time on earth, Magda consistently beat the odds, raised the bar, and never settled for less. When I look at what this man crammed into 32 years of life, uh, two wars and, and major battles uh, during the, one of those wars, World War II, uh, graduated from Western, played football and baseball here, and left a wife and two small children, and Cram all of that into 32 years, the commander of the Blue Angels, uh, it just amazed me. Born the son of Hungarian and Greek immigrants, the Magda family settled in Kentucky, just outside Louisville in Camp Taylor. A gifted athlete with dreams of becoming a teacher, Magda attended Western Kentucky State Teachers College with his high school sweetheart, Mary Catherine Miller, whom he later married. A standout athlete while on the hill, Magda played halfback for the 1937 through 39 football teams and played baseball under E.A. Diddle. Upon graduation in 1940, Magda reportedly turned down a professional baseball contract to answer a greater calling. 
enlisting in the U.S. Navy. So you're not born as a son to have to remain in the work of the father. And that's not true in many cases in the world today. So I think it's the kind of uh, world my father wanted to protect. And of course, they were watching Hitler's movement in, in Europe. And it was quite clear that uh, we were headed to war. And off to war he went, making headlines in June of 1942 during the pivotal World War II Battle of Midway, when, after attacking three Japanese aircraft carriers, Magda ditched his plane and, along with another pilot, survived for five days adrift in the Pacific Ocean in a rubber life raft. All of the men went up knowing that on radio silence they probably would not have enough fuel to get back to the carrier. And when my father's wingman ran out of fuel, he ditched his plane at the same time so that they could put their life rafts together and have a chance of being spotted um, if, if someone sent a rescue plane to, to search for them. So he was actually at sea for um, five days and lost all kinds of weight. No one even recognized him coming back on the carrier. Um, but they survived because of one rainstorm during that that gave him water. And as I understand it, one anchovy school that came by close enough to <laughs> throw fish in the boat, uh, a fish, raw anchovy to eat. So um, when he um, got healthy again, um, he began to work with the Navy about what pilots needed, even the the joke of put a fish hook in your pocket <laughs> uh, and you know a little line on it, a little line and a fish hook in your pocket in case you might need it one day. Magda returned to the United States and served as a member of the first jet squadron to operate on board an aircraft carrier, the USS Boxer. He set Navy jet speed records, received numerous military awards, including the Navy Cross for Heroism posthumously. In 1949, Magda joined the Navy's elite flight exhibition team, the Blue Angels, and became its commander in 1950. Every time as a child and as a young woman, when we would go to Blue Angel events or Blue Angel reunions, I always felt like the daughter of a god walking into the room. Um, men loved him. He just was the kind of um, leader that, whether it was in his younger years when it was in sports teams, he was captain. And so it wasn't a surprise that when he went into the military, he ended up being leader of the Blue Angels because it was just you know, that kind of a person. Well, I would say that um, for Johnny Magda in specific, that uh, his superb achievements as a student athlete at Western Kentucky University and his follow-on tenure with the United States Navy during those years, uh, he personified leadership. He was a leader by example. As the Korean War escalated half a world away, the Navy deactivated the Blue Angels and ordered the jets into combat. Commander Magda devised a plan whereby his squadron would travel to Korea as a team. It was on March 8, 1951, while leading an attack on North Korean and Chinese installations, that Johnny Magda made the ultimate sacrifice. A young ensign by the name of Richard Bradbury served as Magda's wingman on that fated day. It wasn't all that far from uh, where the task force was operating at the time in the Sea of Japan. And we had to go down low to see what was happening, so we made a pass over it. We saw some Chinese troops at one end of the bridge, and we fired a few rounds at them, pulled up to the right, and made a circle and came around. We're going to make a second pass. And just as we started in on it, we were in tactical formation, Johnny's here, I'm here, and I saw this huge flame just erupt from the end of the tail of the, what we call the, the shroud that goes around the tailpipe of the jet engine. And it's just out the back end of the airplane. And I yell, Skipper, you're hit. He was a galvanizing force. Wherever he was, you felt that things were going to happen and you wanted to be there. He was direct and personal. He was, 
a Halsey or a Patton. He wasn't demonstrative, he was quiet, rather self-contained, strangely enough, but always in charge. And people just looked to him, no matter when he walked into the room, everyone looked, see what Johnny wanted, or what Johnny was going to do. And of course, when we were flying, he was the best. 2006 Hall of Distinguished Alumni inductee, John Magda. Thank you all. I'm not used to public speaking, so excuse me. Um, I'd like to thank the people that have put this project together for the, all their countless and uh, hundreds of hours of work. I've known about this for about eight months, and I think there was work done even before that. So thank you so much. It was uh, it's very special to me. I'd also like to thank my wife and my son for coming with me. It's very nice having them here. My father uh, graduated from Western Kentucky just before World War II and very shortly after he graduated he joined the Navy and became a naval fighter pilot aboard an aircraft carrier. He was a courageous man. Um, he was in all the early battles of the South Pacific with the Navy. He was at the Solomon Islands. He was at Midway, where, as you heard, uh, his women ran out of gas. And instead of going on to the carrier, he ditched with them so that they could be picked up together. He was at Tarawa, and he was at Rabal. During that time, he shot down five enemy aircraft and received the distinguished Flying Cross, which is the Navy's, Navy's highest honor for valor and heroism. My father loved to fly, and he was an excellent pilot. He became skipper of the Blue Angels and uh, the squadron leader of the first jet aircraft aboard a carrier in a war. Some other things, my father was a good, a great baseball player. He played it in high school and he played it here at Western Kentucky. His favorite team was the Brooklyn Dodgers. He was a great football player, played at high school, Oklahoma High School uh, near Audubon, uh, near Louisville. And then here in Western Kentucky with quite uh, some success with their teams in the late uh, late 30s. Or, yeah. He liked to play golf. Uh, depending on who you talked to, he was either a plus two or plus five handicap. Let's see, he, he was a man of, of leadership and a man that people really liked being around. I know this because uh, after the Korean War, most of the men in her squadron would stop by the house and they'd make a point to tell me those things. And my aunts and uncles and cousins and friends of the families have always told me what a wonderful man he was and how much they enjoyed being with him. You have to realize that the world of a seven-year-old is pretty small. So a lot of those things I, I didn't realize as much as I would if I'd have been older or an adult. I was only seven, year old, seven years old when my father died. But I do remember that his clothes smelled of tobacco, that uh, his uniform would scratch my face when he hugged me. I remembered that the house was so much happier when he was in it, that I liked to play with him, I liked to talk to him, I liked to ride in the car with him. I remember that my, my father loved me, and I loved him, and I miss him still. Thank you. 
I want to thank everyone for this wonderful opportunity to revisit a father I don't remember and have had a chance through all of this to go back through the stacks and stacks of pictures and letters that my mother saved all these 55 years. My father did have the spirit that makes the master. In such a short life, at, by age 32, when I reached age 32, I thought, I haven't even begun. I had become a teacher and my brother had become a pilot. And together we were embodying both of his dreams. And now we have children, five grandchildren, that continue with the legacy that he began. My youngest son, named John, just said to me the other day, be sure and let me know what all is said. Um, they couldn't be here today um, because we never talked about Grandpa. And I realized the pain of the loss kept us from acknowledging sometimes the power of those early, the short life and the powerful shoes and the, the goals he set for all of us so early. I was in Normandy just as the 50 year um, in France as the 50 year anniversary of World War II. And I had a chance to go and visit the videos and though my father was in the Pacific Fleet, I'm standing looking at over 9,000 white crosses on green grasses with cypress and pine trees. And I look out across that ocean and it sounds peculiar because I was almost 50 years old. But all of a sudden I realize my father is just one man who sacrificed and I am just one little girl who has lived my life understanding that this great country is about the powerful sacrifices of the people before us and the reminder that we all want to be in a leadership in the world to move toward peace where we were reminded that my father's standard would be about the Geneva Conventions, would be so much about freedom of religion and a world without prejudice against race, that we would, as Americans, continue his powerful safety factor that let us move into this time with the task still unfinished. My mother was also a teacher she has dementia now and so we sit sometimes uh, there at the ocean and just recently as I know that she will be joining my father and she has feared that because at 87 she remembers that handsome face that we all saw in the power of his life and flying over the ocean um, were some an unusual moment of five white egrets they're the Heron family, and they usually just, I see them hop from rock to rock, to rock. and this time they're soaring right along the coast, and they're moving up into the sky, and they're almost translucent in their grace, in their beauty, and they fly a lot like pelicans when they're in grace. It's much like the formation of the Blue Angels. And I go, Mother, they're angel birds. And as I said that, in the great grace as they're moving, one rolls right underneath, and the four kind of flare up, and I felt very much that we were in the magic of my father, and that love that he had for life, and the energy that he has given to all of us. I can't tell you how important it has been me, for me, as a four-year-old who didn't remember my father, to go back into the letters that he left to see the man he was by age 32. I want to thank Dr. Ransdale, the alumni committee, particularly Mr. Bob Kirby who made this happen. I know my life has changed again and the great joy of meeting men who knew my father, who loved him, and as a reminder to me I just retired after 35 and a half years as an English professor. I was thinking of myself as retired, but Colonel Stansbury has reminded me I have only just begun. There is much still to do in moving this world toward peace and beauty 
with the courage of my father as a legacy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dale and Marnie. Unbeknownst to Dale and Marnie and others of their family and friends who are here, here to present a plaque to the Magna family on behalf of the Blue Angels is Vice Admiral retired Anthony Less. Admiral Less is currently Senior Vice President of Birdshaw Associates and President of the Blue Angels Alumni Association. <coughs> and boy, if you talk about a distinguished group of alumni, goodness gracious. He completed his distinguished 34-year Navy career after successfully serving in various combat staff and command positions, including com uh, commander and flight leader of the U.S. Navy Blue Angels. Please welcome Admiral Anthony Less. Dr. Ansdell, ladies and gentlemen, Magda family. Uh, the video you just saw was Commander Steve Foley, the current commanding officer of the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels. Um, I had that job, had the pleasure of having that job uh, some 25 years after Johnny Magda had that job. Allow me to say that it is indeed a pleasure, an honor, and I am extremely humbled by the experience here today to present to the Magda family the plaque uh, and, I, and I will do that, but allow me first to say that clearly 25 years after Johnny Magda was the commanding officer of the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, we manifested the mantra that we, the Blue Angels, practice perfection. We know we will never attain it, but clearly it is what we practice and it's still what Steve Foley and the group you saw right there on the, on the video practices today. I would like to think that Johnny Magda brought that mantra from his Western days, football, baseball, and this fantastic organization and this, this, this uh, experience that I'm going through here today. And allow me to say that uh, we, are extremely pleased and proud, we, the Navy, the Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, the Blue Angels, to have had him as our mantra leader in, in years past. What a great American, what a fantastic experience this is. So without further ado, allow me to unmask the plaque, and I have a letter from uh, Commander Foley here provided to the uh, Magda family to Mary, Mom, uh, and to uh, Dale and Marnie, and uh, I would like to present that letter from Commander Steve Foley to, to the family as well. Thank you, and I am so proud to be here today to share in this fantastic event. Thank you. On behalf of the 2006 Blue Angels, we'd like to say congratulations to Western Kentucky University and the Magda family. Congratulations! congratulations.